welcome to D Talk. Today we're going to read a short story called Attila, which is one of the short stories written by R.K. Narayanan in the book Malgudi Days. Attila. In a mood of optimism, they named him Attila. What they wanted of a dog was strength, formidableness and fight, and hence he was named after the scourge of Europe. The puppy was only a couple of months old. He had square jaws, red eyes, a pug nose and a massive head. And there was every reason to hope that he would do credit to his name. The immediate reason for buying him was a series of housebreakings and thefts in the neighbourhood. And our householders decided to put more trust in the dog than in the police. They searched far and wide and met a dog, Fancier. He held up a month-old black and white puppy and said, Come and fetch him a month hence. In six months, he will be something to be feared and respected. He spread out before them a pedigree sheet which was stunning. The puppy had running through his veins the choicest and most ferocious blood. They were satisfied. Paid in advance, returned a month later, put down 75 rupees and took the puppy home. The puppy, as I had already indicated, did not have a very prepositing appearance and was none too playful. But this did not prevent his owners from sitting in a circle around him and admiring him. There was a prolonged debate as to what he should be named. The younger suggested, why not call him Tiger? Every other street mongol is named Tiger, came the reply. Why not Caesar? If a census were taken of dogs, you would find at least 15,000 Caesars in South India alone. Why not fire? It is fantastic. Why not thunder? It is too obvious. Grip? Still obvious and childish. There was a deadlock. Someone suggested Attila and a shout of joy went up to the skies. No more satisfying name was thought for man or animal. But as time passed, our Attila exhibited a love of humanity which was sometimes disconcentrating. The scourge of Europe, could he have ever been like this? They put it down to his age. What child could help loving all creatures? In their zeal to establish this fact, They went to the extent of delving into ancient history to find out what the scourge of Europe was like when he was a child. It was rumoured that as a child he clung to his friends and to his parents' friends so fast that they often he had to be beaten and separated from them. But when he was 14 he showed the first sign of his future. He knocked down and plunged his knife into a fellow who tried to punch his marbles. Ah, this was encouraging. Let our dog reach the parallel of 14 years and people would get to know his real nature. But this was a vain promise. He stood up 20 inches high, had a large frame and a forbidding appearance on the whole, but that was all. A variety of people entered the gates of the house every day. Mendicants, bill collectors, postmen, tradesmen and family friends. All of them were warmly received by Attila. The moment the gate clicked, he became alert and stood up, looking towards the gate. By this time, anyone entered the gate, Attila went blindly charging for, forward, but that was all. The person had only to stop and smile, and Attila would melt. He would be- behave as if he apologised for even giving a- an impression of violence. He would lower his head, curve his body, tuck his tail between his legs, roll his eyes and moan as if he was to say, How sad that you should have mistaken my gesture. I only hurried down to greet you. Till he was patted on the head, stroked and told that he was forgiven, who would be in extreme misery. Gradually, he realised that his bouncing advances caused much unhappy misunderstanding. And so, when he heard the gate click, he hardly stirred. 
He merely looked in that direction and wagged his tail. The people at home did not like this attitude very much. They thought it rather a shame. Why not change his name to the blind worm? Someone asked. He ate like an elephant, said the mother of the family. You can employ two watchmen for the price of the white and meat he consumes. Somebody comes every morning and steals all the flowers in the garden, and Attila won't do anything about it. He has better business to do than to catch flower thieves, replied the youngest, always the defender of the dog. What is the better business? Well, if somebody comes in at dawn and takes away the flowers, do you expect Attila to be looking out for him even at that hour? Why not? It's what a well-fed dog ought, ought to be doing instead of sleeping. You ought to be ashamed of your dog. He does not sleep all night. Mother, I've often seen him going round the house and watching all night. Really? Does he prowl about all night? Of course he does, said Defender. I'm quite alarmed to hear it, said the mother. Please lock him up in the room at night. Otherwise he may call in a burglar and show him round. Left alone, a burglar might be, after all, less successful. It wouldn't be so bad if he at least barked. He's the most noiseless dog I have ever seen in my life. The, the young man was extremely irritated at this. He considered it to be the most uncharitable cynism, but the dog justified it that very night. Ranga lived in a hut three miles from the town. He was the gang coolie often empl employed in road mending. Occasionally, at night, he enjoyed the thrill of profit, of breaking into houses. Uh, at one o'clock that night, Ranga removed the bars of a window on the eastern side of a house and slipped in. He edged along the wall, searched all the trunks and almirahs in the house and made a neat bundle of all the jewellery and other valuables he could pick up. He was just starting to go out. He had just put one foot out of a gap he made in the window when he saw Attila standing below. Looking up expectantly, Ranga thought his end had come. He expected the dog to part, but not Attila. He waited for a moment, grew tired of waiting, stood up and put his forepaws on the lap of the burglar. He put his back his ears and licked Ranga's hands and rolled his eyes. Ranga whispered, I hope you aren't going to bark. Don't worry, I'm not the sort, the dog tried to say. Just a moment, let me get down from here, said the burglar. The dog obligingly took away his paws and lowered himself. See there, said Vanga, pointing to the backyard, there is a cat. Attila put up his ears at the mention of the cat and dashed in the direction indicated. One might easily have thought he was going to tear up the cat, but actually he didn't want to miss the pleasure of the company of the cat if there was one. As soon as the dog left him, Ranga made a dash for the gate. Given a second more, he would have hopped over it. But the dog turned and saw what was about to happen, and in one spring was at the gate. He looked hurt. Is this proper? he seemed to ask. Do you want to shake me off? He hung his heavy tail down so loosely and looked so miserable that the burglar stroked his head, at which he revived. The burglar opened the gate and went out, and the dog followed him. Attila's greatest ambition in life was to wander in the streets freely. Now things seemed to be shaping up ideally. Attila liked his new friend so much that he wouldn't leave him alone even for a moment. He lay before Ranga when he sat down to eat, sat on the edge of his mat when he slept in his hut, waited patiently on the edge of a pond when Ranga went there now and then for a wash slipped on the roadside when Ranga was at work. This sort of companionship got onto Ranga's nerves. He implored, Oh, dog, leave me alone for a moment, won't you? Unmoved, Attila sat before him, with his eyes glued on his friend. 
Attila's disappearance created a sensation in the bungalow. Didn't I tell you, the mother said, to look him up. Now some burglar has gone away with him. What a shame. We can hardly mention it to anyone. You are mistaken, replied the defender. It's just a coincidence. He must have gone off on his own account. If he had been there, no thief would have dared to come in. Whatever it is, I don't know. After all, if we should thank the thief for taking away that dog. He may keep the drills as a reward for taking him away. Shall we withdraw the police complaint? This fosciousness seized a week later, and Attila rose to the ranks of a hero. The eldest son of this house was going towards the market one day. He saw Attila trotting behind someone at the door. Hey! shouted the young man, at which Ranga turned and broke into a run. Attila, who always suspected that his new friend was waiting for the slightest chance to desert him, galloped behind for Ranga. Hey, Attila! shouted the young man. And he also started, started running. Attila wanted to answer the call after making sure of his friend. And so he turned his head for a second and galloped faster. Ranga desperately doubled his pace. Attila determined to stick him at any cost. As a result, he ran so fast that he overtook Ranga and clumsily blocked his way. And Ranga stumbled over him and fell. After he rolled on the ground, a piece of jewellery which had been taken to a receiver of stolen property flew from his hand. The young man rec recognised it, belonging to his sister, and sat down on Ranga. A crowd collected and the police appeared on the scene. Attila was the hero of the day. Even the lady of the house softened towards him. She said, Whatever one might say of Attila, one has to admit that he is a very cunning detective. He is too deep for words. It was well that Attila had no powers of speech. Otherwise, he would have burst into a lamentation which would have shattered the pedestal under his feet. And that is Attila. Bye-bye and see you next time for D Talks.